Hello ladies and gentlemen, scared 4 here bringing you another Minecraft Bath to Build World War II tutorial. In this tutorial we'll be going ahead and building the Leglisionier class cruiser. The Leglisionier class cruisers were commissioned by the French Navy in the 1930s. They were the last French cruisers completed after 1935 until the completion of the De Grassi in 1956. They were considered fast, reliable, and successful light cruisers. Two cruisers of this class, Georges Leguse and Montcalm, took part in the defense of Dakar in late September 1940 and during World War II. With the cruiser Galore, they joined the Allied forces after the successful Allied landings in North Africa in November of 1942. The three other cruisers of the Leglisionier class held under Vichy control at Tolon and were scuttled on November 27, 1942. After refitting, Georges Legus, Montecom, and Galore took part in various Allied operations, including the Normandy landings in 1944. Post-war, several of the class acted as the flagship of the French Mediterranean Squadron and carried out operations off the Indochina until 1956, and afterwards were deployed during the Suez Crisis and operations off Algeria. They were scrapped between 1958 and 1970. So yeah, in front of us right here, we have a kind of really cool, I would say, kind of, I guess, mid to late war really cruiser for the United, or for the French uh, Navy. Um, it's a really nice design and should make a cool addition to a French Navy. We don't have too many French battleships, so it's nice to see the additions of some new ones into our lineup and all that fun stuff. So um, without further ado, though, let's go ahead and dive in here and take a look at this light cruiser. So starting off with, we have the obviously bow of the ship here. Nothing, nothing too crazy, pretty typical. It's a standard about really of any ship you'd really have then you have your guns here we have the front two guns these are mounted in uh triple turrets located in the front so you have your a and b turret for the back we have the conning tower the superstructure which is both our anti-aircraft gun positions and your mass of all your instruments and stuff like that on top then further back we have our mid deck here with our lifeboats obviously the cranes uh secondary guns as well as um torpedo launchers in the mid deck and then further back, we do have some more anti-aircraft gun positions, as well as the third turret that actually, oddly enough, has a uh, seaplane launcher on top of it, which is kind of um, kind of odd for um, a like, cruiser to have a catapult mounted on top of the turret. So kind of a unique ship, uh, but again, should make a really cool addition to your bath to build fleets if you're looking for a nice World War II um, ship. Really, the only good one we really have right now is going to be the uh, right shoe class to John Bart. So definitely nice to see a addition to our French lineup and hopefully we'll see a lot more here in the future. Anyways though, without further ado, let's go ahead and move into the tutorial by beginning with our first layer. All right guys, so moving into our first layer here, we will be going ahead and starting off with layer one. Now, before we go ahead and get started here, we do want to make sure we position this correctly in the water. So if you're building this in the water, you will want to make sure that you start your layer one here level with the water level. You can see here we have our blue concrete representing that sea level or where that water is going to be sitting that top surface. And you can see our red concrete block is exactly in line with that level there. Very important to make sure that it sits properly because if not, the ship's going to sit too low or too high in the water. So you want to make sure that's all squared away before we get started. Anyways, as you can see, we're going to start with a red concrete block and we're going to go ahead and then place down a red nether brick wall going forward from that. We're going to go ahead and go back from this red concrete block with a long row going all the way to the stern. This is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, and 28 red concrete black blocks back, bringing us all the way back to this point here. Now after that we're going to go ahead and place down two red nether brick top slabs, and we're going to go ahead and follow it up with an acacia wood trap door, as well as a red stained glass pane, and then a red nether brick wall, and that right there is going to form our center line here of the ship. So this one you should have so far. Now at this point here, we're going to go ahead and then take a red nether brick uh, top slab. We're going to place it coming off this red concrete block here on the stern, and that's going to be the same thing on both sides. We then want to go ahead and also place down an acacia wood sign that's going to go on the side of these top slabs. And then going forward from those, we're going to place down a red nether brick top slab as well. This one without the sign. We're going to go ahead and place down two red nether brick up on stairs on both sides. And that's going to basically start forming up the rear of our ship. Now at this point, we're going to take a lightning rod. We're going to place down a lightning rod coming off these two top slabs. And then coming off of those, we're going to place down a case wood fence gate and open this toward the top slab. So it'll be like that on both sides. After that, we want to go and then place down a birch wood slab coming off these fence gates, and that is going to form the stern of the ship. 
Now with that done, we're going to go ahead and then take a red concrete and we're going to run two rows going toward the front here on both sides. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and 19 red concrete blocks. We're going to do the same thing over here on this side. So with both rows of 19 done, we're going to go ahead and then place down two red nether brick walls and two red stained glass panes, bringing us up to the bow of the ship. Same thing on this side. And just like that, that will be everything you need there to complete. What we have for layer one here is an aerial view from what it looks like from the top down view. And once you have that all done and good to go, you're good to go ahead and move on to the next layer, which will be layer number two. Moving on to our next layer, we have layer number two. For layer two to start with, we're going to place down a stone block that's going to go on top of this wall. And then we're going to go back from the stone block. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, or sorry, 21 uh, right there. So we're going to stop at 21 blocks long. This here is going to be, again, forming the center line here of our ship. Um, or actually, my bad, it's going to be 22 blocks in total. So 22 blocks in total is what you want. And then going back up to the front here, we're going to place down a polished blackstone button on both sides of that second block from the front. We're going to go ahead and then place down two light gray stained glass panes back from that button, again, on both sides. Two andesite walls back. And then we're going to take our stone blocks. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16 back. Same thing over here all the way back like so. Now at this point here, we're gonna go ahead and take our polished black stone buttons and we're just gonna go ahead and run a row of polished black stone buttons all the way along the side of our stone blocks. And this will be done on both sides here for all the little portholes that are on the side of the ship. Once that's done, go ahead and go into the uh, mid deck section. We're gonna go ahead and start off by placing down a stripped um, oak wood block, followed by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and ten of these blocks back or actually eleven so it's gonna be eleven of these blocks back like so we're gonna go ahead and then place down a stone block on the very end to the side of the stone block we're gonna place down like gray stainless pane and then one pane going forward same thing over here on this side and then we're gonna go ahead and place down two andesite walls going forward from those glass panes after that we're gonna take our stone blocks go ahead and place down a row all the way like this connecting to that those forward rows and again, we're going to take our polished black stone buttons, and just like we did before, we're going to run these all the way along the side here of the remaining stone blocks on the sides of the ship. And that right there is going to complete everything we have for layer number two. Again, here is a top-down view of what it looks, should look like with, the, with that layer all complete. And with that, we'll be going ahead and moving on to our next layer, which will be layer number three. Moving into our next layer, we have layer number three. For layer three to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to place down a stone block on top of this block here, and then a stone up down stair. We're going to go ahead and place down another stone block back, and this here will be followed with two skeleton skulls on both sides of these two stone blocks. We then want to go ahead and grab ourselves some gray wool. We're going to place down one, two, and three, four, five, and six gray wool blocks down the center like so. Now once we have that done, we want to go ahead and take our stone stairs. We're going to place down two upside down stairs to both sides of the first two gray wool blocks. And then we're going to place down one, two, three, four stone blocks back. One, two, three, four. Now after that's done, we're going to take, continue on with our gray wool. One, two, three, four, five, and six more blocks down the center. And again, some, six more blocks to the sides here with your stone blocks. Just like that. Then just taking our polished black stone buttons, we're going to run our polished black stone buttons all the way along these stone full blocks. Again, on both sides of the ship here for, again, those portholes. With that done, we're going to go ahead and then continue on with our midship by placing down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8 stone blocks down the center. This will then be followed up with a stone upside down stair, and then two more stone blocks like that going down the center. We're going to go ahead and then go to the sides. We're going to place down a gray carpet that is going to go right here, followed by a birchwood fence gate after it. Open the fence gate toward the rear of the ships. And then a stone brick stair to both sides like that for your secondary guns. We're going to go ahead and then place down an end rod that's going to go after the stair. And then after that, we're going to go ahead and place down a gray bed that's going to go directly after that. And that's going to again be on both sides there. After we have that done, we want to go ahead and then place down another birchwood fence gate. Open this toward the rear of the ship. And again, we're going to place down a stone brick stair for our secondary guns. 
After that, we're going to place down two more, or sorry, three more light gray stainless panes going back from those stairs along the side. And then once we get to this point, we want to place down a set of two oakwood pressure plates to both sides. And then we're going to place down a skeleton skull in between the second set like that. We're going to place down a stone block. For my Java players, we're going to go ahead and place down a piston. If you're not on Java, you can go ahead and very simply uh, just place down like a stone stair instead or just an air stone full block. For us though, on Java, we will be using the piston. And we're going to talk about that a little bit later. Then we're going to place down like racing with panes on the sides here of these blocks, just like that. After that's done, we're going to go ahead and place down three end rods coming off the glass panes and the piston. We then want to go ahead and place down a lever on top of these two stone blocks and we're going to go ahead and then place down a uh, item frame underneath them if you're on java again being on java you'll be able to place down an item frame and lever in the same block space if you're not on java or a different version you will have to go ahead and just place down a lever and you won't be able to place down the item frames we're going to go ahead and place down a stone button here in the center and then we're going to place down two oak wood pressure plates going back from each one of these levers. Once we have that done, in the middle space between the second set, we're going to place down a redstone repeater and we're going to separate the notches from each other like so. And then we're going to place down a stone button here on this center block. Now when you get to this section here, um, we will go ahead and place down an end rod and an iron bar. So we have an end rod here and then an iron bar that's going to go up from it and back at an angle like that for your pull. Uh, for the back here for the rear mast um, and basically at this point here is going to kind of again depend on your game version. For us on Java we're going to go ahead and place down some blocks that kind of go up and add an angle out to the side here from those glass panes. We'll then go ahead and grab ourselves levers and we're going to go ahead and then type in the command slash give at p minecraft colon debug underscore stick. So this command here press and enter will give you this glowing stick. What we can do now is we can place down levers on the side of these stone blocks and then use our debug stick to left click them, selected face wall, should be the prompt that pops up, we'll right click these and set these to floor. We're going to go ahead and do this for each one of these and then after that we're going to go ahead and then take our debug stick, left click this lever on the back here, the back corner, and we're going to go and change the facing. And we want these going ahead and facing toward the rear of the ship. And we're going to go ahead and very simply just place down item frames underneath those uh, levers like that to go ahead and finish off those anti-aircraft gun positions. Unfortunately, if you are not on uh, Java, you'll not be able to do that addition on the back there. Um, so you would have to either find a different solution there or just, uh, you know, go without. So um, that right there is pretty much it for that. Uh, one thing also I'm going to go ahead and talk about real quick that we can also do is the addition of some item frames. Again, this is going to be more of a Java feature. Uh, but what we can do here is you can place down an item frame in a yellow stained glass pane and we can place this underneath our levers or our end rods here and we can also do ahead and go ahead and place them underneath our fence gates so kind of a good way just to go ahead and kind of cover up the underneath here and actually these ones around here are secondary guns we're actually going to be using gray stained glass so make sure you go ahead and swap that out for some gray stained glass but just kind of helps keep our deck color a little bit more consistent um, but is obviously something that's kind of more of just a minor detail and really an essential part of the build. Anyways, though, that right there is going to conclude what we have for layer number three. And with that, uh, we'll be going ahead and moving on to layer number four. Moving into our next layer, we have layer four. For layer four to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to go ahead and begin with by placing down a end rod that's going to sit on top of this stone stair here. And just to finish it off, we're going to place down an iron bar on top of that as well. Um, so we have the front of the ship done. We're going to go ahead and then place down a redstone or repeater, separate the notches from each other like so. And then grabbing our redstone dust, we're going to place down two redstone dust going back from that repeater. To the sides of the redstone dust, we're going to place down gray carpet here. And then another redstone repeater, this time with the notches also spread apart like so. We're going to go ahead and then place down a lever to both ends. Again, for my Java players, we can place down an item frame underneath the uh, levers like that to kind of help show the gun emplacement. Then after that's done, we're going to go ahead and then place down a piston that's going to sit one block back from the... Um, Redstone repeater, so you have one block of space and you have your piston here. And then we want to go ahead and grab our light gray stainless panes and we're going to place it to both sides, as well as another stone block and another light gray stainless pane. Again, the alternative here to this uh, piston is to either use a stone full block or a stair, depending on what version of uh, Minecraft you are on. We're going to go ahead and then take our end rods and place down a row three across this space, like so. Again, for my Java players, we can place down item frames underneath those, um, those, uh, 
end rods and we can go ahead and then place down some gray stained glass panes um, in those item frames like that again to help keep that darker gray deck color. After that's done, we're going to go ahead and then place down a stone upside down stair that's going to go right after that stone block, so like so. And then on the sides of that stair, we want to go ahead and place down a skeleton skull to both sides. Taking our stone blocks, we're going to go ahead and go back one, two, three, four, five blocks. And then taking our light gray stainless panes, we're going to place down one, two, three, four stainless panes. Same thing over here. After that, we want to go ahead and then place down a cobweb to both sides. And we're going to go ahead and then after that cobweb, place down a stone brick top slab and the end rod to both sides. Once that's done, we want to go ahead and then place down an andesite wall after that stone brick top slab, followed by a stone full block, and then a white bed right here. We're also going to place down an end rod on top of these two end rods like that on both sides. This section here, we're going to place down a piston. You can go ahead and also substitute, substitute this out for a stone slab if you want to, but for our case, we're going to use a piston. We're going to place down another stone block and another cobweb like so, and then we're going to go ahead and place down a redstone repeater with the notches spread apart like that. Then we're going to place down a gray carpet, followed by a stone block, and then another gray carpet going back like so. For your rear turret, we're going to take our daylight detectors. We're going to place down one, two on top of the two blocks of the turret, and then one going forward and one going um, back from the turret. So it's going to look something like this. And you can turn those daylight detectors to the night mode to go ahead and create that catapult there for your seaplane. Now, once we have that done, uh, we're going to go ahead and also cover a feature here for my Java players. This is going to be using your debug stick here and levers. We're going to go ahead and be taking our debug stick and doing the same technique that we used on the rear of the ship. And we're going to go ahead and uh, face these levers so they face out toward the outsides. Again, we'll place down a item frame underneath those blocks just like that. And also, for all versions, we're going to place down a flower pot here on top of this glass um, pane. And after we have that done, uh, the last thing really for us to do here is to go ahead and take a chain and just on top of this fence gate here, we're going to place down a chain like that, which will be part of those bid deck cranes that we have. Um, anyways, though, that is going to conclude everything we have there for this layer. And uh, with that, we'll be going ahead and moving on to layer number five. Moving into our next layer, we have layer five. For layer five, to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to go ahead and begin up by going ahead and placing down a piston on top of this second, or actually this uh, stone up down stair. We're going to go ahead and place down an end rod coming off of it, and then a light gray stainless pane to both sides of the pistons. Again, just a uh, you know, reminder again that you can replace the piston with a stone block or stair, depending on your game version. And then we're going to place down another stone block that goes back from the piston, as well as a light gray stainless pane to both sides. We're also going to go ahead and spice up this turret a little bit by going ahead and placing down an item frame and a white bed that's going to go on the side of the glass pane that's on the wall right there. And we're going to go ahead and rotate that right white bed so it sits sideways. And we're going to go ahead and then also take our birchwood sign. And again, for Java players, we'll place down a birchwood sign on the side of the glass pane just to kind of help blend it in with the build a little bit more. Um, but just for like a little life raft or something strapped to the side of the turret. After that, we're going to go ahead and then place down a gray carpet that's going to go back from the turrets. And then a stone block here, followed by a second third, and third block back. We are going to go ahead and then take flower pots. We're going to place down a flower pot on top of these two blocks here. And then we're going to place down two stone ups down stairs going back from the stone full blocks. After that, uh, we're going to take our iron bars, we're going to place down a row of three across, and we're going to go ahead and place down a stone block here, and then a stone block on top of this one. We're going to go ahead and then place down an iron trap door that's going to sit here on top of this, um, this uh, cobweb, and then we want to go ahead and place down a uh, grindstone that's going to sit on top of these end rods. Going forward from the grindstone, we're going to place down two end rods, like so. And then going ahead and going to the back here, we're going to place down a lever on top of this stone block facing toward the rear, and then we're going to place down an item frame here on top. We'll also go ahead and just grab ourselves a barrier block, and if this can be obtained by typing the command in slash give at p minecraft colon barrier, and this is right here is your command, press enter will give you this barrier block. Now, they're also called structure blocks on different versions or void blocks, whatever you want to go ahead and use. Uh, basically, you just want an invisible block that you can attach a button to. Um, and this is all we're going to be using for the rigging. So, we're just going to place down a stone, or rather, actually, sorry, a barrier block here, come off this um, lever, and then just a stone button to both sides of that block, just for the time being. 
Anyways though, that is going to conclude everything we have there for layer number 5 of the build. Again, here is an aerial overview of what it looks like from the top now view so far. And we have the main structure done pretty much for the most part. So really at this point, uh, we're probably just going to be moving into our last final layers of the build and going ahead and knocking it out all in one go. So with that, let's move into our last final layer. And moving into our next layers, we have layers 6 through 13. These are going to be the last layers of the build and we'll go ahead and get this thing finished. So to start with, we're going to go ahead and go to this stone block. We're going to place down a stone brick slab here in item frame and then a black bed rotated sideways in the item frame. Again, for my Java players, we'll place a birchwood sign on the side of that slab as well for a bit of... Um, the extra blending it in. We're going to then place down a skeleton skull to both sides of that slab and then we're going to place down a piston that goes back from it like so. The piston can be substituted out for a stone full block that would work just fine as well or a stone stair. We then want to go ahead and place down two levers to the sides like so on top of those stairs and we're going to place down item frames underneath them again for my java players. We'll then place down a stone full block here and then a skeleton skull coming off the full block to the sides of that uh, that uh, skeleton skull, we're going to place down a um, pist piston like so. These pistons can be substituted for stone full blocks. We're going to place down a trip bar hook coming off the front of the piston. And then we're going to go ahead and then place down a button that's going to come off of um, the pistons like so. So we're going to sit kind of on the back here like that. Now going ahead and going up for our mast, we're going to place down a stone brick stair on top of that stone block. Followed by a birchwood sign to both sides of it. We want to continue this up with another um, birchwood fence post and on top of that we're going to place down a second stone brick up sound stair. And this one's going to be upside down and facing that direction. We then want to place down a birchwood fence gate here on the front, like so. For my java players, uh, we're going to go ahead and build a block out from the side of that fence gate and we're going to go ahead and place down a trip bar hook, like so, on the side of a block. We're going to go ahead and then left click the trip bar hook till we get selected facing. We're going to go ahead and rotate this around so it comes off the fence gate. Uh, left click this again until we get selected attached false. We'll right click this, set this to true, and it'll kind of stick out to the sides there. So like that for the for the top. On top here, we're going to go ahead and place down another piston. Again, this can be substituted for a full block of some sort. And then a trip bar hook to both sides of that piston. After we have um, that done, we're going to go ahead and then place down a gray, or rather first off, we're going to go ahead and need to place down a cobweb coming off the stair. Then we're going to place down two birchwood fence gates going down from the cobweb. We'll place a fence gate that's opened up toward the back, or the one that's connected to the cobweb will open up toward the back of the ship, and this one on the bottom here will open up toward the front. On top of these pistons, we're going to place down two barrier blocks going up. We're going to place down buttons on the sides of these barrier blocks, like so, on both sides. And then we want to go ahead and go off the cobweb with a end rod to the sides there. A narrow fence gate coming off this cobweb, open it up toward it, and then going up again from the fence gate, we're going to place down two cobwebs, like so. Then we're going to place down a gray carpet on top of this cobweb here, and then a skeleton skull coming off the sides of this carpet. After that, uh, we're going to place down another iron bar on top here of this cobweb, and then an iron bar to the sides of it. Then we're going to place down a fence gate, open this up toward the cobweb like so an end rod, and then a flower pot on top to go ahead and finish it up. So that right there is going to um, basically create that like so. Now after that is all done, uh, that's our main mass complete, and we're going to go ahead and go to our funnels. Our funnels here are pretty simple. We're going to place down a polished black stone stair on top of this stone block, and then we just want to go ahead and place down a dark oak with sign around these three sides of the stair. And then on the back here, we're going to place down a slab that's going to go on top of this stone block. We want to go ahead and then place down a fence gate that's going to come off this um, slab that's going to be going up or going forward from it and then opened up toward the slab. Then we're going to place down a barrier block like so and then an end rod to both sides of that barrier block just like that. And then on top of that barrier block, we're just going to go ahead and place down a stone button. We're going to go ahead and then take our barrier blocks. We're going to place down another one back like so, and then we're going to place down two more coming off that slab. On this barrier block here, we're going to place down a button to both sides, one on top, and then one to both sides of this one here. And then continuing on up, we're going to go ahead and go up again at an angle, so kind of coming off the stone button, we're going to place down two barrier blocks, and then one coming off this fence gate. We're going to do the same technique before, two buttons, one on both sides, one on top of this one, and then one on both sides of this top one, just like that. And that's going to go ahead and create our rigging here for the ship. 
Now at this point, the last thing we really, really need to do here is for my uh, Java players to take our debug stick. We're gonna go ahead and left click the piston until we get selected extended false prompt pop up. We'll right click this to go ahead and get rid of the wood portion and we're gonna go do this for every single one of our pistons. Uh, so it'll be the ones in the turrets, the ones around the conning tower, the ones in the midship and on the back here. And once you have that all complete there, that is gonna wrap up everything we have here for my tutorial for the uh, French Le Glissonier. Yeah, the little here class cruiser. Hope you guys do enjoy this tutorial and are able to put it to good use. If you do use this build, I do ask that you guys give me proper credit for it. This will be the from a side of the build, tweet to my channel, or this video if this does appear on social media sites. As long as you guys give me proper credit for it, you're freezing for a project you guys are working on. Um, with that though, thank you guys again so much for watching. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. This has been your 204, and I will see you guys next time.